The Clan War League record has been broken and for the first time in the history of the game, 385 out of 385 stars were put on the board in the Champs 1 War League. Who was playing and what strategies were used? Let's go find out. Yo, what's going on everybody? As you can see from the title of this video, we did get the world record in the Champions War League and this is the first time any team in the world has ever gotten a perfect 385 stars in an entire week in Champs 1 at the highest league. And in this video, we're going to be going over each of the days, highlighting some of the best attacks throughout the week and explaining what was going on through our heads throughout this entire week. So let's get into it. All right, so diving into the first war of this entire week, we were up against Clash Buddies and you can see some familiar faces on your screen right now. We have Navi Dima in the rank one of their team. And there's also Avatar who used to play in Bad Zingers a few years ago. And then some other noticeable faces could be Muhammad Marawi at number 12. He used to play in early attacks a few months ago. And yeah, this war I'd say was our most challenging war of the week. And jumping right into it, like we can see over here in the war events that they basically started off really strong with the commanding five three stars. And then we had one hit from Ghost that went in early, but they just continued their dominant form. Like they were at one point 11 for 11, and then they were 12 for 12. And then their 13th attack, they can, you can see here, they one starred Max's base at only 98%. So that was a really close hit. But in this war especially, I wanted to highlight the fact that Van had an amazing hit on base 9 over here. And let's just jump into the attack and we'll talk through it. So, we have a ring style base here. And just from the army composition, you can see he has zap spells. He has healers. He has a warden walk. What the? I thought this would be a queen charge for sure, but clearly not. So, he's starting his warden walk up here on the 11 o'clock side and he did his zaps down here for the multi and the monolith and he has a jelly on his warden and he's starting his heroes down at six o'clock already doing everything relatively quick and he also has a jump spell i wonder where he's gonna use that but okay everything's looking good he's just getting his funnel down and using a quake and there's a fireball right there and that is some crazy value but unfortunately the warden does look like okay he's dead He's done. It's wraps for him. But let's see. He has his king heading on in towards the scattershot and the clan castle troops right now. Placing his RC down on the left side of the base right now to help clear up that expo compartment. You can see he broke his queen in as well. And he's using the jump spell to get his queen to the town hall. And it looks like this queen is going to be nice and healthy due to the RC taking up all the DPS from the left side of the base. And he has a whole lot of left. But he has no warden so it's gonna be interesting but yeah as you can see here already he's just gonna have to lalo through one compartment because his queen is going to take the town hall as we can see here with her ability all nice and he's gonna start sprinkling his balloons all across the rest of the base and he does have a super drag in his clan castle which was a stone slammer that he deployed and that's gonna help take out the royal champion and as you can see, this is absolutely destroyed. He still has spells left over. He has a haste spell. He has a freeze spell. And yeah, this looks like it's absolutely destroyed from man. And this is a great start to our CWL week. Let's go find out what happened in day two. All right, guys, heading into day two here, we were up against number one, which appears to be a Chinese team. Um, and th in this war, we didn't necessarily have a lot of pressure like the last one because these guys already had started with a few fails. As you can see, they had like a handful of fails, about like seven or eight of them. And this really gave us a good advantage going into the war because we did our hits relatively later on as we did on most of the days. But in this war, I did want to highlight Damien, who was only able to join us for two wars because he's not able to play throughout the entire week. But he had some really nice hits. And today we're just gonna be looking at one of his hits in day two and it's another ring style base but here you can see there's a double rage section on either ends of the town hall and damien's keeping it nice and simple only doing the root rider spam as we are all loving in the current meta so let's see what he can do with this 
it appears that he's taking his sweet time to start this attack because you know there's a lot of calculations that needs to be done before the, the attack starts so it's a very very high stressful situation right now because we are almost done with the war and he's one of the last attacks to go in to in ensure we get a perfect war so he's going in right into the eagle and he's just gonna get his double rage in as it's classic and an early warn warning ability he's got his siege barracks working on the top side planning to take out the king with there and the queen on the bottom side nothing to distract her and as his troops start getting towards the middle of the base he is going to be using the overgrowth spell on the other side of the town hall and notice how he waited for the rage tower to pop and then he used the overgrowth spell so therefore the rage tower will not be active after the overgrowth expires and now you can see he sent he started his rc over here because this lava hound was giving some difficulties here but everything looks relatively fine his roots are cruising on this side his king is in the core dealing a lot of damage and there, there goes the town hall and his queen is beating an interesting wall to say the least but it does not look like she's going to survive for much longer here but her rc the hit the rc is putting in some insane work i must say and she can she take that out yep the hogs took down the ricochet cannon over there and He's pretty much sailing here. He's got a lot of root riders left here and they're just gonna clear on in into this back end ricochet cannon and it should be nice and crushed. And yeah, that was our second war. Not really much to talk about at this point. We were like, all right, we got two perfect days. Let's just see how things are going. And we just took it one war at a time. So let's go see how day three went. All right guys, so here in day three, we have a war against House of Elites who put up a great fight not to say the least and they did put up 40 stars and their fails were towards the end of the war as well so they've been keeping up on um, they've been keeping up pace to our three stars as well basically the entire war it just fell a little short and I think this war was some of our most commanding three stars but in particular I just wanted to look at our attack on base 9 which was done by Leo and here you can see it's a double rage tower setup and it's a diamond style base and what we're gonna basically do here is just a root rider spam but uh, something some key things to note here is that you can see he's using his king not with his root riders but he's using him to funnel his root riders and what this does is that it sets up his root riders to perfectly go into one of the rage towers while his king and queen deal with the big six o'clock side and he's just gonna simply end on the other rage tower and as we go in here he's going very speedily so missing some key things which was this which was that the poison lizard actually from the warden was able to take down the super dragon and he's and this time you can see that he's combining the rc with the root rider spam over here and then his heroes are working up over here on this other side rage tower and he's just slowly collapsing on all corners of this base and 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 at the end he's going to end on the town hall well, it expired quite early, so he's going to have to deal with it earlier than he would have probably wanted. But all good. He's got a lot of firepower left. Queen's looking strong. He used a few wall breaks to help her out, and she could reach the scatter shot. And then he pops his royal champion ability, and everything's going really quickly. So, great attack by Leo here. One of the quicker attacks, one of the quicker wars that we've had this week. And now we're three wars in, and we know that this is actually possible. Okay, so heading into day four, we were up against Rocky Boys, Iran, and these guys had been doing great the entire week to say the least, and it was going to be one of our more challenging wars we felt like, and it was to an extent because they did get 40 stars, but they started off with a few fails, so we knew it was possible and it was in our reach to get the W if we did get 45 stars. And in this war, I wanted to look at base 11 here which got hit by max and he hit towards the end on almost every war and he was usually claiming the last base which was left for him so not the easiest thing to do and that's why we are going to be looking at one of his best attacks this entire week here and as you can see here the clan castle is relatively towards the outskirt of the base over here so therefore he's just going to be luring it with a few giants being patient no need to go fast and he's just gonna take out the CC early on with a baby dragon and a poison spell. And that helps him out because now he does not have to worry about those ice golems throughout the entire attack. And root riders are usually known to be really fast, right? So there's no need for him to rush, especially since it's 
clan war leagues and not an esports war so as you can see he's just gonna break his king into one of the compartments on one side and he's gonna send his root riders into the other side and he's using a log launcher on this one and not the siege barracks that we're accustomed to because there's an invis tower in the middle of the base here and that is going to need to be dealt with or else the root riders are just gonna go wander off and as you can see here he's starting his royal champion and the whole point of this rc is so that he can funnel his root riders to the core of the base as we can see over here and this is going to help really just take out all the damage that is in the middle and you see his king cleared everything on this side and oh shout out to the baby drag look at this he's taking out the ricochet cannon w baby drag honestly it's looking amazing he used an overgood spell while we were discussing about the little details on this base and now you can see the attack is really kicking up the speed and he's just raging his royal champion because he has nothing else to really rage and yeah he's basically surrounded the base took it out everything and he's going to end on the stuff that he did overgrowth and basically the base is done it has no chances of defending swags a rage he did not need that rage uh beautiful hit here by max and great way to end the war especially after thinking that it was it might have been our least favorite war because these guys were doing damn good heading into day five up here against cam dynasty and these guys were not much of a challenge i must say because they also started with a lot of fails and this really just showed us that we need to take this seriously because it's actually possible to get a world record here and speaking of taking it seriously one man we have not talked about this entire week has been ghost and he hit base six over here and we're going to be breaking it down for you guys because it was on a double invis style ring base and this is all over legends league right now so let's find out how he takes down these bases with the zap sui root riders and as you can see he started off by just zapping the monolith and an invis tower and now he's going to be sending his king into a multi-target inferno which is going to help him take out of this clan castle troop and it's going to help him get that nice carve and nice pathing that he needs to make sure that his root riders are all nice and straight after his sui and as we can see he's going to be using a log launcher which is not something you see usually with the zap sui root riders but it's just one of the little things and little tricks that are going to help you take down these toxic double invis style ring bases and as you can see he's also going to be starting with the root riders relatively early from the nine o'clock side and this is just a prime example of why this army is so strong as you can see he used the log launcher to break his queen into the core turning this into a sui while he's starting with his main army on the side to help funnel the queen in as well this queen's gonna make light work of the town hall here the root riders are going strong at six o'clock and he still has the warden ability not used and this is looking insanely strong here from ghost right now the queen is even going to take out the ricochet cannon it looks like no she does not take it out uh oh but it's honestly no worry at all you can see the healers are coming to the root riders here and he's using his warden ability finally rc peels off takes out the ricochet cannon and now we're gonna have everything collapsing in on the three o'clock side here this was honestly a picture perfect attack here by ghost if you haven't already checked out some of the videos that we have done with ghost showing how strong this army can be i will leave a link down below in the description and you can check out how he uses this army so well and swag freeze for the boys over here amazing work so yes this gave us a good start to the war and as you can see we were able to capitalize on that start and everyone else three start out so Let's go see what happens in the last two days here as things are really starting to intensify. Day six is here and this war got way too close. And to be fair, these guys were probably a close follow up to one of our toughest opponents because as you can see, they only had two fails and that was towards the end of the war. And it was a 94% and an 89% fail. And that was honestly really pleasing to see because let's just take a quick look at the war events here and we can see that the war started off they started with the hit and we did our hits relatively early then they did a few hits we did a few hits it was pretty back and forth and then we really picked up the gear we took out almost all if we did take out all we took out all of their bases 
and then we were just sat there praying for a defense and the defense is what we got as you can see here on the 13 minutes 13 hours and four minutes left they did get their first fail and that really helped us because we would have been really sad if they managed to get a perfect war on us because it would have ruined the record and we were so close and in this war I think it's important we highlight the one and only Mr. Ben, Dobbs Ben, you guys might know him as. This is one of his alt accounts called Benny Boy. And he and this is going to be one of the fastest hits we've had the entire week. So for all of you guys looking to get faster, take some tips as he's going to be going in with Root Riders, I know. But this is the only way you can be fast in the current meta. So take a close look at what he does. Already starting the Royal Champion up here, by the way. So that is very early probably something that not most of us are doing right now but Ben clearly knows what he's doing so he's starting the royal champion quite early up there queen on one side siege barracks on the top side over here forgot to point that out and we didn't miss it but he just used the overgoat spell on the clan castle so he covers the town hall and the monolith and some archer towers down here as well and now that the archer towers are not in use he can use the skeleton spell down here and some barbarians to start cleaning everything up and as you can see his king is currently stuck in the ice golems in the middle which is actually perfect because that gives time for the king to stall and then boom right there right there now he can use his ability take out the town hall as soon as the overgrowth expires perfect timing and yeah i had to speak a little fast on this one because of how fast the attack was but you guys can put this in times 0.25 and you can hear what I said if you missed anything but yeah great day let's go check out how the final day went because that's where everything came down to the wire all right guys so on the final day we were up against Knight Riders which is a popular Indian clan which my Indian viewers are probably aware of it's got some TW TW TWOB players here and they have some others but mainly TWOB and in this war it was quite interesting because we realized the opponent was not doing the best not sure what happened maybe a few of their clanmates were busy but they didn't manage to get all their hits in either but we surely did and in this war I think it only makes sense if we highlight the last attacker BJG and yes it's time to switch some gears up we are going to be looking at some zap lalo and this man is crazy he did zap lalo the entire week while some of us were only doing root riders and huge shout out to him and as we can see it's a double rage style ring base and these are quite popular in champs one if you guys weren't aware if you guys are looking to get some new champs one bases you can check out the link in the description because we are putting out 15 new champion war league bases each month set up to give you the best defense so do check that out if you are looking for value and efficiency and quality so Without a further ado, let's start with the Lalo up here, BJ, starting off with his Sui, per picture perfect, no mistakes whatsoever, Queen and King are working in here, King cleared this compartment, and the Queen is clearing that compartment, and she will be able to reach the Eagle Artillery here, and as we can see, he was able to get the other side Sweeper over here taken down, so he can Lalo from the 12 o'clock side with ease, and he's just gonna use a blimp for the Town Hall, take it down, no problemo whatsoever, and now he's going to start swirling his balloons around the entire left right side of the base. And yeah, this is absolutely the reason why this guy was playing with us. BJ is honestly one of the most talented Lalo players in America right now. And as we can see, this is a great attack. Getting a little bit close at the end, but do keep in mind he does have the Royal Champion ability still left, which is going to clear up this base with ease. And this was the last attack of the entire Champion War League. He had all of the pressure on him and he delivered. We had about like 10 spectators at this time. We had some fam some friends in the clan as well who were spectating. And it was honestly a great moment because this will go down in history as the first ever 385 star Champion War League finish. And that was it. So honestly, it was a great week everyone was really involved and everyone had a lot to discuss about their plans sometimes but everyone was there for each other and we were really just putting in the work because we didn't honestly think that it would be this like possible but Town Hall 16 is what it is so let us know what you did think about this performance down below in the comments 
and I will catch you guys in a different video later this week. So, bye-bye.